looking back to Election Preview 2000, and certainly if the race for the assembly seats in this area have been exciting and intense, so too has the, the Senate races. The 41st District is a, a district that is, encompasses just as much as the assembly. Listen to all of the different areas, because I don't think some of us realize how large these areas are. Fishkill, Poughkeepsie, uh, Beacon, East Fishkill, Hyde Park, LaGrange, Clinton, Stanford, uh, all of Columbia County as well. And with me is uh, Jean Flagello, who is the Democratic candidate. Hi, Hi Jean. It's how a are you doing? Pleasure to be here, Nancy. You Thank too. You. Boy, what a large area! When you decided to run for this seat, did you think that? Did you think it was going to be that big? Yes, I did. <laughs> and I have thousands more miles on my car to show for it. <laughs> Running all the way up, because Columbia County is a pretty tricky county it's to get around. It's big and it's beautiful. It really is. Um, as a lawyer, you bring in a per certain perspective in terms of what you would like to see in this campaign. And I know both you and, and Steve Saland, who is the Republican incumbent, have both talked about a quality of life that you would like to see uh, addressed in terms of this campaign. What is a quality of life that you would like to, to envision for this campaign? Well, or for this area? For this area, I, I think I'd have to divide my answer if that's okay. Sure. Um, I can start with an environmental answer to that. And I see this area as a booming area, right. um, particularly Dutchess County. But that boom is also extending into Columbia County, as, as my travels have shown me. And um, I'd like to see the beautiful quality of this area retained. I'd like to see planned growth. I'd like to see smart growth. I would not like to see Route 9 turn into another uh, LIE. Right. Um, and Long I'm, Island Express. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> I come from you don't city. know that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. That's all right. I know that shorthand. Um, so I think. But that is a concern, isn't it? Yes, it is a concern. And I'd like to see the area retain its beauty and retain um, its open spaces and still be able to thrive economically. I would also like to see housing continue to be affordable, which. At this point in time, it's questionable exactly how many people who still live in Dutchess County can afford to retire here. Um, that's an interesting question because I, I'm, I'm talking to a realtor, and, and I'm going to say again, this is in the southern part, and not uh, because I think in the certain city areas you can still find affordable housing. Yes. Um, but when you're starting housing at, um, and they said they didn't have any, they were not building anything for 100 and, under 175,000. Uh, for many people, that is unaffordable. And for a young family starting out, that is uh, that's pretty high stuff. And then you go 175,000 up. Yes. Um, how do you do that? How do you balance these two pictures of bringing in young professionals, and you're going to be bringing in a thousand more IBM workers, and and um, still get a kind of a uh, a boom that's starting to happen again in terms of the real estate? How do, how do you do those two fires? Well, part of it is by uh, state subsidized loans for housing and that's how you attract new people into an area and assist them in being able to afford a home. The other part of, of that answer is to be able to assist the localities in doing smart growth. Right. And When you talk about smart growth, you're talking about what? I'm talking about planned growth. I'm not talking about developers coming in, purchasing these tracts of land and trying to figure out how they can maximize uh, right. their dollars. Right. Fourteen houses on two acres or exactly. five acres or whatever. Exactly. I mean, or cluster housing. Or cluster housing. Yes. Um, that also obviously is impacting other other um, vital parts of the infrastructure here, and that's water systems, sewer systems, yes. and, and traffic, as we were just talking about. Um, how do you get the, the, the different municipalities to work with you in terms of that? I think that there needs to be a statewide initiative um, if you look at all the different local planning boards, they're all volunteers. These people, God bless every one of them because they work hard for no pay. And they care about what they're doing. Now, if we could at a statewide level um, kind of share resources and provide financial incentives and provide some local assistance in the form of some real experts. Right. Advisors. Uh, exactly. Where people could call up ask them to come down, ask them to do a workshop, ask for input at no cost to the locale, I think we would see a real major step in the right direction. 
I have to, to, to agree there's a lot of body growth, but it's not always consistent as you go up and down. And certainly you're seeing a real difference between the growth that you're seeing, let's say, in um, uh, Fishkill, uh, Wappingers, that area, and town of Poughkeepsie, versus, let's say, up in Columbia County, where you're, you're seeing a, a mostly rural area. Um, trying, to com trying to balance those two is, is tough. But I know you're getting housing developments up in Columbia County. Yes. A lot of weekend housing. A lot of weekend housing. And um, there has been some industrial development up there, but not a lot. Interesting, because you get the city of Hudson, which is doing very well in yes. terms of an antique district. Um, the other thing I think, obviously, is health care. Um, issue, again, in terms of all of the candidates tonight, how are you looking at the health care issue? From what I remember, you want universal care. I would like everybody to be able to have affordable health care. Um, accessible health care, and most importantly, in the event of a catastrophic illness, to be able to get the best health care. And um, I don't necessarily think that a single-payer system is what's going to work, um, but I also don't feel that at this point it's been made a political priority in this state. How do you go about making it more of a, with Health Care Reform Act and different things along that line, how do you push a, a certain program? The, the, the primary uh, rationale be, be behind the Health Care Reform Act was not to provide health care for everyone. Right. The primary goal of that was to allow insurance companies to go negotiate with hospitals directly for rates. Right. Okay, so you set up the priority that everybody deserves and should have affordable, accessible health care, and then you work from there, as opposed to allowing the insurance companies to set a rate. Which, which exactly. Which they're going to be working exactly. with. Um, the other part of it is is uh, school financing. How are you looking at that? Um, certainly, the STAR program has has received uh, you know laudations from both sides of the aisle in terms of of, um, of at least reducing some of the uh, property tax Star, burden. Yes, STAR provided. I'm sorry for interrupting you. No, that's all right. Go. Um, STAR provided a much needed relief for a lot of people, particularly senior citizens. Um, however. It didn't go far enough, and I know that a lot of localities are, you know, you have a $200 star exemption, and then your school taxes go up by $200. Right. So um, that's a problem. I think the larger problem is actually the, the financing of an education in this state. And um, we need to look at other different ways to do that, whether it's by a, through the income tax mm -hmm. would be one way. Mm -hmm. um, Increasing the state share of the funding would be another way. Right. The Changing the mix. Right. Exactly. And the state's portion has been reduced in the past couple of years. Yes, in terms it of has been. What they are contributing. Uh, what about Pell Grants? What about tuition assistance in terms of students? Have you, uh, have you been looking at uh, ways of reintroducing some of these uh, programs or increasing the, that assistance? Um, I think that once you make the commitment, the, the plans will flow from the commitment. Because a lot of students are saying, where's that money going to come That's from? That's right. That's right. <laughs> um, the other thing in terms of is, is education and uh, as a person who teaches, is um, the quality of education that we we see an awful lot in terms of the newspapers, in terms of the quality of education constantly, that these tests are showing improvements, these tests are not showing improvements. How are you looking at that testing in terms of the education? Is the Regents' exams really uh, increasing the uh, education quality, of, or are we just doing more tests? Well, that's an interesting question. I have three children, uh, the oldest two of whom are twins and just graduated from a public high school and are now in college mm -hmm. and my baby is 10 years old and he just last year took the new fourth grade ELA test and I noticed that um, he did very well but they taught for the test so to answer your question I think it's too soon to tell exactly what that's doing the bar has been raised no question about it but the issue again is have we just raised the bar what happens to children who are in special ed classes um, and there's a substantial number of children who don't fit within the quote-unquote normal school population mm -hmm. and need additional services. And what are we doing to them? Because now there's only a choice, as you well know, between a Regents Diploma and an IEP Diploma. Right. And there's no more general diploma in New York State. I don't know if that was 
uh, necessarily the best thing to do to our students in this state. Have you heard from teachers who, who themselves question uh, whether the quality of education has improved under these exams? Uh, because certainly one of the other scrutinies is, is are the teachers performing well uh, in terms of the quality of teaching? Have you heard anything in feedback from teachers as you've gone through this campaign? Well, many of the teachers that I've spoken with have indicated that the new testing has not resulted in a, in a greater quality of education for students. As of this date, I'll qualify it. Um, and in terms of teacher quality, my mother's a teacher, so I'm an almost expert on this. <laughs> and um, I lived with her for 25 years teaching. And um, the quality of a teacher is so much dependent upon the integrity of the teacher, the dedication of the teacher, um, and also the amount of control that that teacher has in terms of his or her students and the backup mm -hmm. that that teacher has. So if you feel that you're getting what you need out of your administrator, okay. uh, many times you'll be an effective teacher. And if you feel that you're constantly bucking the system, okay. that's got to impact on your effectiveness. Certainly a major issue that, that's sitting in our, um, our classrooms in this area is just the amount of students per classroom. Uh, certainly as you're seeing, I mean, because school is where they have to go. That's a, that's a, 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 a state standard. Uh, but when you're seeing uh, large amounts of families coming into the area and schools are having to immediately provide the facilities, it, it allows for some real sharp problems, doesn't it? In yes, terms it does. Of a lot of pressure at one time on, an, on the certain institutions. How do you deal with that? Well, I don't see currently any state mechanism or statewide mechanism for dealing with that problem. Um, I think that in many cases we need to look at some emergency fund that schools can access to either set up temporary classrooms, which mm -hmm. I've seen done in other school districts, um, to assist local districts in obtaining the necessary supplies. And, um, you know, right now we're talking really basic basics. Right. We're not even talking about one of my pet goals, which would be to have every child who graduates in this state be technologically competent right. when they graduate. Last one that we, we haven't really touched on, but certainly is on that uh, when you go into that voting booth, and that is the Transportation Bond Act. For it, against it, how do you feel about that? Well, I think that we need to improve our infrastructure on transportation, no questions asked. But after looking at the bill and then looking at the state surplus, I really question whether we need to bond $3.8 billion when we have a $2 billion surplus in the state. Um, so I'd like to reserve judgment, but I can tell you that I am personally not in favor of borrowing that level of money. Jean Flugillo, good luck. Thank you, Nancy. The 41st. Thank and, you. And uh, we'll be right back with more candidates, more issues right after this. Many of you may remember that it was uh, Hans Fisch 